Good morning everybody and a very warm welcome to this service of Lammas, which is our thanksgiving to God for the first fruits of the harvest. Now usually this service is held in one of the uh, woods in our benefice and for the last three or four years it's been held in this wood uh, which is on the east uh, side of Garway Hill. Um, but of course this year like everything else um, uh, our service has to be a virtual one and in some ways there's some advantages in that because for one thing we're not dependent on the weather and secondly it means that we can have a good sing if we want to. Um, now as usual this service will incorporate um, a blessing for our animals so if you have an animal who shares your home with you um, I hope that uh, he or she can be in the room with you to join in with the service. I know, I, I'm glad it's that I'm not in a, a, a room with my dog at the moment because she uh, always raises her voice as well if we start singing. Maybe yours will as well. Now before we start our service, um, I suggest that we have a few moments silence uh, to just absorb uh, the sights and sounds and smells of our countryside. I hope you are able to open a window and lean outside. Maybe your Wi-Fi will uh, reach far enough for you to actually be sitting outside, I don't know. But whatever it is, just take a few moments to listen, to see what you can hear. The sound of the wind, perhaps the sound of animals, sheep and cows perhaps, if there are any close to you, bird song, to look and see what you can see out there, and to smell the various fragrances that are in the air, perhaps flower blossom, perhaps mown grass, maybe something stronger if you live near a farm. Just a few minutes silence now. So we begin. Let us pray. Your Spirit, Lord, is around us in the air we breathe. Your glory touches us in the light that we see and the fruitfulness of the earth and the joy of its creatures. You have written for us your revelation as you have granted us our daily bread. Teach us how to receive it. Amen. And now we'll sing our first hymn, which is Morning Has Broken.
Well, now we come to the presentation of the Lammas offering. For thousands of years, our ancestors presented to God an offering of the first fruits of their harvest in thanksgiving for his love and his faithfulness. And this year, many of us have had more time to work in our gardens and there's been an upsurge of people growing their own vegetables and other crops. And some of you have sent in pictures of your own first fruits of the harvest and here are some of them. So first we've got apricots from Feeney and Robin's home. Lucky people, hey? Cherries and potatoes from Mike and Helen. Elderflowers in the bowl with the lemons being made into elderflower cordial. That's come from Chris and Andrew. Oh, and the honeycombs too. My goodness, look at those, all um, hanging still in the hive, ready to be taken out and the honey to be taken out of them. Now, a beautiful vegetable garden. That's John and Meg. And now, this year's lambs, stout and healthy and ready to make many a, a good lamb chop. I think this one was barley. Looks like it with those long whiskers, but it's got quite a long way to go before it can be harvested. And then at somebody else's um, a vegetable garden with mange too and potatoes and beans. It's that fencing I like. I wonder whether it, it, the, the um, hazel fencing is enough to keep the rabbits out. I bet, that, I bet that's what it's for. And then another one of mange too. This one's from Garway Hill. Now the next one I needed to be told what it was. These are walnuts, which you clever ones will probably re recognise, but I didn't. And this one, bales of wool from this year's shearing. So we've got some nice cool sheep now. And lastly, some eggs and the happy hen who laid them in Horwithy. And so we pray. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. You bring forth bread from the fields and give us the fruits of the earth in their seasons. Let them be for us a sign of your fatherly care. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, worthy of our thanksgiving and praise. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. And now it's time for our confession and <clears throat> we'll have a few moments of silence while we think about our planet and how we use and abuse it sometimes. O oh Lord our God, everything we need comes from you. Our food, our water, sun and rain, good soil, seed and the spark of life. Yet we forget you. We think we are the powerful ones caught up in our own pride. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You delight in creation, its colour and diversity. Yet we have misused the earth and plundered its resources for our own selfish ends. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have, have mercy. mercy. You have showered us with blessings, but we have been grudging towards others and lacking in generosity, in word and deed. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now we're going to sing our second hymn, When from the Sky in the Splendour of Summer.
reading is from Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was the evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome, and separated the waters that were under the dome, from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over day and over night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over creep all the creeping things that creep upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he created them, male and female, he blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in it, its fruit, you shall have for food and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth everything that has given has breath i have given every green plant for food and it was so god saw everything he had made and indeed it was very good and there was evening and there was morning the sixth day thanks be to god So now we come to the part of the service which is for the blessing of the animals. When we're all together in the wood on Galway Hill, at this point in the service, all our dogs and any other pets that we've brought to the service 
come forward for their special moment. One year we had a horse who got extremely wet but didn't seem to mind at all and a parrot who was not at all impressed by the presence of the other animals there. The dogs are usually well behaved but sometimes there's a violent spat which wakes everybody up while we sort them out. We won't have that problem this year but we do hope that you've got your own nearest and dearest animal with you in your home as you join in with the service. I think for many people their pets have been even more important this year than usual because we've been with them so much more and lacking seeing other people our animals have filled the gap a little. I know I've had long slightly one-sided conversations with my dog while I've been working in the garden. Some of you have been able to share pictures of your pets or animals who've come visiting your homes with us. Here they are. Here's Thady and Gypsy with the Miners family. Here's Pickle with the Herbert family. Poppy with Mike and Helen. And now here are Devon and Springbell who are the Ubridge hens uh, apparently christened by uh, little grandson Billy. Here's Rosie with Andrew and Chris. Here's Brock, who's my dog, with my son Ro. Here's little Sam having an unexpected encounter with a badger. Here's Hilda, Zadok and Cedric. I wouldn't be able to quite say which is which. And here's Bailey. And then some other visitors who perhaps we don't see quite so often, but who are there in our fields, in our gardens, in our woods, when we're not looking for them. Now let us pray. O Lord our God, we give you thanks and praise for the animals who share this earth and our homes with us. We thank you for their company, their faithfulness, their service and their acceptance of us. May we always care for them properly and never betray the trust that they show in us. Amen. Now it's time for our third hymn, For the Beauty of the Earth.
lesson is taken from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 14, beginning to read at the 13th verse. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a desert place apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the cities. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them, and he healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart. Give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, we have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven, he blessed and brake and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up of the fragments that remained Twelve baskets full. And they that had eaten were about five thousand men, beside women and children. Here ended the Gospel. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart may be acceptable unto you, O God. Amen. Both our Bible readings this morning have been about the incredible generosity of God and his creation. In his version of the story of the feeding of the 5,000, Matthew describes how one person's gift of just five small loaves of bread and two fish, somehow in Jesus' hands, become enough to feed all those hungry people. There are many ways of understanding this well-loved story. Some people would see it as a supernatural miracle, something that's beyond our human comprehension. Others would see it as a more human miracle, that of one's, person gener one person's generosity encouraging others to put their hands in their pockets, to open their bags and to share the food that they'd been hiding away. That would be just as much a miracle as the first option and one which we can all relate to. And for some people, the story is a metaphorical one, an illustration of how the power of goodness and life and love, which we call God, can provide for all of us, and that there is enough for all, both of physical and of spiritual food, enough and to spare, as long as we share it around, just as God shares his wonderful creation with us all. During these many months of the pandemic, there have been shortage of uh, a, a number of necessities, starting with the loo rolls and the hand sanitizers, and then flour and tin tomatoes and so on. And it's made us all think a good deal harder about where these things come from, how they're grown or manufactured, how they're processed, and who the people are who are necessary for getting them to us. The farmers, the market gardeners, the factory workers, the transport industry, the shop workers. And it's made us realise that we can't always have what we want when we want it, even if we do have the money to pay for it. And for many of us, it's given us a nudge to get out into our gardens and start growing our own fruit and vegetables and made us realise our good fortune in this area in having space to do just that. It makes us recognise our dependence on the natural world and also the benefits that getting outside into it has for us. Many people across the country have reported how getting into their gardens, growing things perhaps for the first time, has really helped them to get through this difficult time and has awakened a real interest in the natural world and everything in it. GP surgeries are prescribing gardening and forest school for people in the cities, knowing that the help that it gives people with frail mental and physical health. 
back at the beginning of the spring, I hadn't got a chance to buy seeds for my own garden before the lockdown came. And I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to make very much use of my garden. But people along my lane here set up a Facebook group so that we could all keep in touch and share news and shopping. And it wasn't long before old neighbours and new friends shared their seeds with me and I was able to give them plants and cuttings in return. And that's been the pattern of this time, hasn't it? Because the usual routine of our lives has been overturned and shaken up, and we've made new connections, new friends, thought a bit more about other people. That sharing was one of the first fruits of the lockdown. And there have been other good things that have come out of it too. Having more time at home has given us the chance to catch up on all sorts of jobs that have been needing doing for months or years. People have started new projects, home improvements, craft projects, swapping tools and materials, sharing resources. It all makes us realise that we are not isolated islands, but we need to be part of a sharing network. There has been much to give thanks for. But of course, the first fruits of our harvests are not always brilliant. Sometimes the slugs have been at the peas, or the carrots have suffered from lack of rain, and we're disappointed with poor crops after all our hard work. And similarly, life has been hard for many people during these last few months. Trying to keep a business going, with no staff and no customers, trying to think of new ways of trading, looking after elderly parents, or taking on homeschooling of grandchildren. It can renew and refresh family relationships, but sometimes it can lead to stresses and tensions which have to be worked through. People have had to change the way they work, and for people at the forefront of the NHS, it's been a really tough and dangerous time. But it will all be worth nothing if we just forget it all and hurry on to whatever comes next. In our gardens, we need to work out what went wrong and change the way we do things. Do more watering, put down the bear traps for the slugs. And it's the same for our rest, the rest of our lives. We need to take time to reflect on our experiences, think what we have learned from them, share those thoughts with God and ask for his help in thinking how, me, we, how, me, how we might want to do things differently in the future. Amen. And now we've got a few slides of some of the other fruits of the lockdown, things that people have been doing during this time, uh, which they probably wouldn't normally have had time for, or the opportunity. And we're going to have some pictures to show you. This first one is of rug making. Wonderful colours, aren't they? The next three um, are of the honey making process. Um, some of our Friends have got um, beehives up on the hill behind Hallwithy and it's been a very productive year. And this first one is the beehives and then harvesting the honey from the combs and then potting up the honey. It looks jolly hard work but I bet it's worth it. Next we have some fascinating artwork. Um, which has been done as part of a, a college project using pyrography and all sorts of different materials, producing beautifully delicate um, um, uh, interpretations of nature. Next, a building project going on at St Wanners. A family has, has now got a, a beautiful new big kitchen that's been going on right through the lockdown. Next, embroidery, then tapestry, and lastly, a bridge building project, which uh, has been 
undertaken by a grandson and his grandfather as part of a technology project uh, for school. Uh, they had to, um, well, they decided, I don't think it was set to do this, um, they decided that they would like to build a useful bridge over the river at the bottom of their field um, and it had to be 20 foot wide and it's five foot across uh, above the water uh, and you can see the very proud um, builder standing on it there. Well done. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are reminded this morning that every good and perfect gift comes from you and we are grateful for all your goodness to us. And Lord, in this moment, we want to sit, be still and thank you particularly for the beauty of your creation and all that it provides for us. We are reminded in Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. We thank you for our little corner of Herefordshire. We are so blessed. When we look around at all the various crops, the grains, the oil seeds, the potatoes, all of the fruit, the vegetables, the hops, the wealth of rich pasture land and abundance of animals that are raised here, we could be forgiven for thinking this was Britain's Garden of Eden. We are grateful for the fertile soils and the rivers and the streams that nourish our land. We are particularly grateful for the farmers who tend and care for the land and for the army of people who work hard each season to harvest the crops. Lord, we have all come to understand that one of the best things about lockdown is having the time and space to enjoy your creation. Some of us have had the chance to walk paths and lanes around where we live for the first time and we've seen and been blessed by the beauty of what we see around us. It thrills our hearts and lifts our souls. Thank you, Lord, again. We recognise your blessing and favour upon us. And yet, Lord, we confess that we so often take all of this, all of the resources this world so generously provides, for granted. For the fuel that powers our cars, for the energy that heats and lights our homes, for the pure, refreshing water that gushes from our taps. All of this we so easily take for granted. And because of your bountiful provision, we in the West have so much, and yet, because of this, we often waste so much. Lord, we are ashamed of our extravagant, throwaway lifestyles. Help us to be better stewards of what we have been entrusted with. Lord, much has been done in recent times to highlight the way we are mistreating and mismanaging our planet. Much has been done to try and correct our destructive ways. Lord, help us to take responsibility for our own actions. Make us mindful of our own footprint on this beautiful world. Lord, in the same way our tummies are always full, may our hearts be forever full of gratitude and praise for your unending goodness to us. For we ask these things in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Now we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, Father in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, your be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our daily bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins, sins as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now time to share the peace. You shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. May peace be with you. Peace be with you. And now our fourth hymn, Praise God Who Created the Mountains and Valleys. Thank you. 
This we know, the earth does not belong to us. We, we belong, belong to, to the earth. earth. This we know, all things are connected, like, like the blood, blood that, that unites one, one family. family. This we know, we did not weave the, the web of life. We, we are, are merely a strand, a strand in it. it. This we know, whatever we do to the web, we, we do, do to, to ourselves. ourselves. Let us give thanks for the gift of creation. Let, Let us, us give, give thanks, thanks that, that all things hold together in Christ. And now God's blessing. May God bless the sun above us, the earth beneath our feet, and all the creatures of the earth. And may he lead us into peace in the name of the Holy Three, Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer. Amen. Amen. Thank you.